first off, I want to thank you all for subscribing to this channel. You are so awesome and I wouldn't do it if you didn't do it. So thank you. All right, guys, so here we go. We have this old headboard, it's pretty cool. It's got some nice chunky, chunky dealies here. I like chunky stuff, that's fun. Here, looks like it had probably one of those um, like seashell kind of a dealies on it. It's covered up with wood putty. Um, I did this months ago, but I'm assuming it was a seashell and I'm assuming I couldn't get that plaque off. And that's why I did it. Anyways, let's go ahead and start off by getting that sanded and then we'll get moving on making this bench. It's important to clean your piece really good before you start painting. Always prep work important. Sometimes you even need to prime. Today we're not going to prime, but we're going to be using Totally Awesome. You can get it at the Dollar Tree, literally a dollar. Mix a little bit in with another thing of water, spray it down, wipe it off, clean until your rag comes clean, and you know what? This one you don't have to rinse. That's awesome. IOD molds are a great way to give a little bit more um, up to whatever project you're doing. There's so many different molds, almost a mold for everything you would ever want, I would imagine. This is the cherub mold. It's pretty classic. I think it'll be around for a while, but you just never know. Today, I'm gonna be using resin. We're gonna mix two equal parts Stir that up until it's clear, then we're gonna pour it in. This is the last of the last of my amazing resin. So I'm gonna take this little stick and push it into all the little corners. Hopefully having this table behind my headboard will give me a little bit more stability when painting. As this resin sets up, it turns from clear to white, and that's when you know it's ready to release. I'm going to take my mold, pull it back, and release my mold. You can also use air dry clay. Either one of these is awesome, and you just need to glue it on. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Whenever I use resin molds, I tend to go with E6000. If this was an air dry clay mold or a paper clay mold, I would probably use wood glue. Laying your project down flat is just going to help your glue dry better and you don't have to tape it. So let's just use gravity, right, to help us out. We're going to be using Wise Owl's Chalk Synthesis Paint today. A couple different colors and of course my favorite brush line, Klingons. Why cling on, you say? Well, as you can see, this sucker's been sitting in a bucket of water for probably a month. Look at the rim, absolutely no rust, and I still haven't lost a bristle. You really can't beat Klingons. watch the refurbished gentleman well he has his own color by wise out we're going to be using that sea salt and limestone and let's start doing some blending for the beams of this headboard i'm going to go ahead and apply my base color pretty much majority all over it This is my F40. I love this brush, but you can see the handle's a bit long, so I'm just gonna take it to my saw and cut that bad boy off. Now that we have our base coat of sea salt on there, let's go ahead and start adding in our refurbished gentleman. Okay. 
By blending these two colors together, we're getting basically three different colors. So we're getting our refurbished gentleman, we're getting our sea salt, and we're also getting a mixture of the two and in different tones, a little bit lighter here, a little bit lighter there. I almost always use the same brush when I'm blending. It just helps to make those colors more fluid to help them because you already have your other paint colors on that brush. When you dip into a new one, it's just gonna help you when it comes to making a fluid, pretty, soft, blended piece. For this cherub mold, I started off going in straight in with Refurbished Gentleman. I hope you have a misting bottle. If you don't, don't worry, I have some. I have really good ones and they're big, which means you don't have to fill it up very often. I love my misting bottle. When I'm blending paint, no matter what brand of paint it is, I always have my misting bottle in my left hand. That way I can just give my piece a little psh, psh and it just keeps the paint moving. It makes it fluid. It um, keeps movement and helps you to blend your colors really, really well. Misting bottle, definitely. 100% need it. Find these big negative areas to be a little bit more challenging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all three of my colors and I'm just gonna spread them out. I'm just gonna keep working this and working it until I have, you know, the look that I want. My Klingon's gonna help me out with that and little like a little feather touch, like a feather, like a baby's butt. And that's gonna smear, it's gonna take out all the lines and, um, so we don't want brush marks, right? Definitely don't want those. We're gonna be using two two by fours and two eight inch pieces of pine. To start building the bench portion of this, I'm going to go ahead and take the measurement of the entire headboard all the way across. I'm going to subtract the width of both my legs together from that dimension. That's going to give me the front portion of this bench. For the back support board, I'm going to go ahead and just take that original measurement, the complete length. That one's going to be my back one. your side pieces you need to decide the depth that you want your bench to be how much I usually go right around 16 so I'm gonna cut those boards to fit right in there and subtract the thickness of my leg no matter what I'm using a leg a 2 by 4 whatever subtract that from your depth that way it'll fit just right all right so now we have everything cut to the size hopefully that it needs to be now we're gonna get out our pocket jig. This is a Craig jig, makes jig holes. We're gonna be using a Craig jig. There's a lot of different ways to make pocket holes, but this is my favorite one, my go-to, the one that I'm gonna do. Pocket holes are awesome because they're gonna hide those screws and give you a lot of stability, a lot of strength to whatever you're building. Let's see if we can hook all these boards together. Oh, just broke my bit. Back to Home Depot. All right, we're all masked up and ready to go in. I have to, have to, have to go check out all the house plants every time I go to, well, any store. You never know. Look around here, I really am not digging this selection. These are all pretty common. 
But if we look at these monsteras, every now and then you might find a variegated leaf. If you found a variegated leaf, girl, you just hit the gold mine. Well, once again, no luck. Let's go over there and see if we can get ourselves a new bit for our Craig. Stock has been super low, so I was a little bit nervous, but what do you know? Here she is. All right, so we got our stuff. Went ahead and got some screws and a new bit because my luck, I won't be able to find mine. And here we go back. Oh my goodness, can you believe the view from the inside of my garage, my poor neighbors? That we have our new bit, we just need to hook this little guy on here with the Allen wrench that comes with it. You can do it to the depth of your screws. What size screw are you using? Well, I'm using two inch, so I'm gonna go all the way to the one and a half inch point, tighten up that little washer dude on there, and we are ready to go. I really am pretty happy this broke on me because it made me go buy a new one. Man, that's so smooth. I think I've been needing a new one for a long time. first half of this assembly, we're going to go ahead and lay this down again. It's going to help me a lot. I'm doing this by myself. Nobody's here to hold anything for me. So let's use gravity and try to make it as easy as possible. For this backboard or support board, I'm going to go ahead and just make some pilot holes and screw it in straight to the headboard. Nobody's gonna see this portion, so it doesn't matter, and this will make our bench nice and strong. Let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Don't forget the glue. Lots of wood glue. Can't tell you how many times I've forgotten glue. Don't do it. Glue is important. And having a good, good time Doesn't matter if the snow is falling Or the windows in the rain is pouring It will always be Christmas in my heart but It's Holly. She came in just to say hi and see what I was doing. This was my mom's dog. I lost my mom, gosh, two years ago now. And uh, yeah, I'm happy that I have Holly. you have your jig holes made you can use any screws that you want but i actually used craig screws this time and i have to say they worked pretty darn well hard to do this by yourself you're going to have a little bit of pull out and then push again and tighten that stuff right back up if you get it in the wrong spot that's okay take it out and do it again we've got the level on there let's see if it's level you know it's a tiny bit off but you know what I'm gonna take it I think it's all right okay so I'm just kind of dry fitting all my wood on here I had this old piece of trim that I used for another project and I thought it might look pretty right on here let's go ahead and draw some lines do some cuts we're in the desert it gets cold super fast I don't feel like sanding right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this together. I'll sand it in the morning. Well, I totally messed up. I forgot support boards, and those are super necessary, so cut two more pieces of wood. I'm gonna go ahead and put some jig holes in here and hook in some support boards now before I assemble the bench. Those darn support boards, I always forget them. I always have to pack up and add them in. But, you know, you, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Let's go ahead and assemble this. Today, I'm gonna use my Ray OB Brad gun. I have two different ones and I use them for different reasons at different times. We're gonna assemble this one with the Ryobi one. 
am done for the night and Miss Roxy enjoys her garage bed bed. She's got numerous beds throughout the house, but while she hangs out with me in the garage, that's her spot. For the look of the seat of this bench, I wanted something a little bit different. So I'm gonna take this stain and I'm gonna apply it straight on my raw pine. Before it dries, I'm gonna go in with some dark wax and rub it back over it and then wipe off the excess. This just kind of gives me a little bit of dimension on this bench and I'm pretty stoked with the way it turned out. Santa's coming to visit No, he wouldn't miss this In Christmas times Oh, oh and the sun said it is just getting better On a blanket with the skyline painted in blue All right, time to top coat this guy. We're gonna use one hour's enamel in satin. This is the most durable finish that I have found out there. It's awesome and it goes on so easy. glaze you really want to just get a good amount on your brush and you're gonna put it onto where you want it then you're gonna take your damp towel you already have it nice and handy and you're gonna wipe back that access that's gonna allow your glaze to just sit in those deep spaces and give you a really pretty look your glaze on there if you think it's necessary. For this piece, I did not. Where I applied the glaze on this piece is not high traffic. I am not worried about it coming off, so I did not apply another level of top coat on there. But you definitely can if you're concerned about that. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. And remember, only you can make it happen. If you're interested in any of these products, head on over to windmillvintagedesigns.com. Happy holidays. If you're interested in any more of my videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It means so much to me. Santa's coming to 